Hi class, Mr. Falstrom here, and today we are going to dive deeper into volume. So I hope you're ready to put on your scuba mask and tank and fins and dive in with me. Let's go. Your learning goal for this lesson is we're going to do a few things. The first thing is we are going to practice finding the volume of rectangular prisms using different strategies. We're going to try and explain the steps that you use to find the volume of rectangular prism, and we're also going to be writing some expressions. So we're combining a lot of the things that we've learned so far this year into fifth grade into this lesson. So really quick, let's just do a, a very quick, brief review of volume. And so volume is the measurement of the amount of space that a solid three-dimensional figure occupies or takes up. And uh, here is an example. So the volume of a 3D shape, we would use the number of unit cubes needed to fill the inside of the shape. So how many unit cubes would fill that rectangular prism? 16 cubes fit in that prism, which means that prism has a volume of 16 cubic units. In a unit cube is a three-dimensional cube and all of the sides are one unit long. So the length, the width, and the height all measure one unit. And we use those to calculate volume. And for simple 3D figures, um, and it, we can just count unit cubes. So this is a simple figure. It's made out of unit cubes. So to find the volume, we're just going to find the total amount of cubes that were used to build it. So if you count the cubes here with me, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cubes, which means this has a volume of nine cubic units. And area and volume are very similar, but there are some differences. So again, uh, area is the amount of space inside of a flat two-dimensional shape. It's measured in square units. So this rectangle, it's made out of 12 units. We would multiply the length times the width, those two dimensions. 6 times 12 gives us 12 square units. For a 3D figure, such as a rectangular prism, we would, we would look at all three dimensions. So this is 4 units long, 3 units tall, 1 unit wide. You can count the cubes, or we can multiply those numbers, and we would get a volume of 12 cubic units. So that's our review for volume. And now we're going to jump into volume strategies. And first, we'll start out with strategies that apply to simple 3D figures, such as this one right here. You might have recognized this from an earlier video. So one strategy is if it's a simple figure like this, the best thing you can do is just count the cubes. So if we count the cubes, this has a volume of six cubic units. And some figures have hidden unit cubes that you can't see. And you have to be careful when you count these ones because you have to realize that there's some cubes that are uh, hidden from view. So in this case, there is a hidden unit cube. And again, you're going to have to count here. This isn't, there's no fancy strategy. We're just counting cubes and you have to remember to include the hidden ones. So this one actually has a total volume of seven cubic units because in the very back, there is that hidden cube on the bottom in that bottom layer. So now we're going to talk about strategies for rectangular prisms. And again, rectangular prisms are made out of layers of unit cubes. And if you missed the last lesson, layers are like floors or levels. So some examples that I shared last time were like a, this cake has four different layers. Each layer is a different color. You can also think of it as like buildings or garage, like a parking garage has different levels that you can park your car on. Each floor is a level. So when you build something out of unit cubes, it's going to be made out of layers of cubes. So this will be our first strategy and it's uh, counting and adding. It's the simplest strategy there is. So let me ask you, how many layers are in this prism? There are three different layers. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to count 
how many cubes are in one layer. So go ahead and count them. Let's go ahead and count the orange layer because that's the one that where you can see them all. How many cubes are there? And if you counted correctly, you should see there are 10 cubes. And now we have to count how many layers there are. There are three layers, which means that we're going to be adding 10 plus 10 plus 10, which gives us a total volume of 30 cubic units for this rectangular prism. So again, this is nothing fancy. We're just counting up the cubes in a layer, and then we're adding that number based on how many layers there are. A strategy that's a little more advanced would be counting and multiplying. And it starts out kind of the same way. So we're going to use the same prism for this example. So again, there are three layers. It's the same prism. We're going to count how many cubes are in a layer, which we've already did last time. There are 10. This time, though, instead of adding 10 plus 10 plus 10, we're going to multiply. There's three layers, so we're just going to do 10 times 3 and we're going to get the same answer, 30 cubic units. Um, there isn't much of a difference between this problem and the last problem. Um, I think most people would, th would agree they're both easy. 10 times 3 is an easy multiplication problem, and 10 plus 10 plus 10 is also an easy addition problem. So I don't really see too much difference on this, on this prism, but depending on how many cubes there are, how many layers there are, um, that could make one strategy easier than the other. Um, so let's change it to a different prism. Let's do the counting and added, adding strategy again. So this time we have a nice pink rectangular prism. And how many layers are there? There are four layers. And I'll start out by asking you again, how many cubes are in the top layer that you can see them all in the yellow layer? So count them. And there are 15 cubes in one layer. And we did that just by counting. And then there are four layers, which means we're going to add 15 four times. So to find the total volume, we're going to do 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15 and that gives us an answer of 60 cubic units and now we'll look at it using the counting and multiplying strategy so same prism same amount of layers has four layers we'll count this you know we count the cubes in the top layer we already did that before so we know it's 15 there's four layers, and instead of doing 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15, you could also do 15 times 4. And this should make sense because multiplication is the same thing as repeated addition. So that's all that we're doing. Instead of doing that repeated 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15, we can say that's the same as 15 times 4. And the answer is, of course, the same, 60 cubic units. Both these strategies are effective. However, counting is not the most efficient strategy. So let's talk for a minute about those two words, effective and efficient. What does it mean to be effective versus being efficient? Well, if a math strategy is effective, that means it's a successful strategy and it works. So counting and adding is effective. It works. So is counting and multiplying. It also works. The word efficient means if something's efficient, it means it requires less steps and work to complete. And that should have your attention. Because if you're like most people, you don't like doing extra work for no reason, especially when it comes to math. So let's talk about, let's talk a little bit more about efficiency. So let me give you an example of being effective versus being efficient. Let's just pretend for a minute. Let's pretend that somebody come, somebody says, hey, I'll pay you $1,000 if you can move all these bricks for me. Now, an effective strategy that would work would be you just pick them up 
and you carry them to wherever they're supposed to go. Um, you can probably, you're probably going to be able to carry one brick in each hand, which means it would take you a pretty long time. It'd take a lot of trips to move all those bricks. And it probably would be more difficult than, you know, than you'd want it to be. An efficient strategy that's also effective would be, let's say you had a wheelbarrow. Now you can move more than one brick at a time. You could put a lot more bricks in there than just two bricks. And because there's a wheel on the wheelbarrow, instead of you having to carry them, you can wheel them there and probably get them there faster. So another example of something that's very efficient in the real world would be machines. If you look at the, um, assembly lines, a lot of factories use machines now instead of people. So for example, if you just look at this, this GIF, I'm on team GIF. Sorry if you're on team GIF. Um, if you look at these machines, these machines don't waste any time. Each machine has one job and that's all it does. It does that job very quickly. It doesn't do any unnecessary moving or anything like that. Um, it's a very, it's very efficient. The, whatever's being built here, they're being built very efficiently and quickly. And that's sort of the goal of what we want to do in math is we want to try and learn strategies that let us do problems quickly and easily. So counting is certainly effective. And if you like doing that, I'm not telling you to not to abandon the strategy, but just realize that if you're counting, it's taking you more time and you're working harder compared to just multiplying. Multiplying is usually quicker. It's usually more efficient. And it's just as effective as counting. And I realize that some of you, you might like the counting because you're not good at multiplying. And you're probably sick of me telling you that you need to study your multiplication facts. You have to learn to multiply. Well, here's the thing. You're just making everything harder for you because as you go higher and higher in math, you do problem you do you do a lot more problems with more numbers and counting. Just to do one problem is going to take you forever. You're making math harder on yourself. If you learn multiplying, math is going to get so much easier for you. Don't you want things? I mean, I think most people want things to be easier for them, right? Um, so I'll stop lecturing about multiplying. But I just want to point out that for this volume, multiplying is going to be the most efficient strategy. Let me give you an example why. Look at this prism. Do you really want to spend all the time to count all of the cubes in one layer and then add them all together? Do you realize how much longer that's going to take you compared to somebody that knows how to multiply? Not only that, there's so many cubes here that if you're not careful, all you have to do is uh, be off on your count. Let's say you just forget to count one cube, or let's say you count one of these cubes in extra time. Well, now what? Now what? Now you just got the whole problem wrong because you counted the wrong amount of cubes. So what if I told you there, there was an easier, more efficient way than just counting or even just counting and multiplying? What if there is an even easier way than that? Would you be interested in learning about the easiest way to do volume quickly. And that strategy is just multiplying. We're not count, we're not adding, we're just multiplying numbers. Let me show you. So this rectangular prism, it has three layers and we have to do a tiny bit of counting. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the length and width to get the number of cubes in one layer. So if you follow along with me, that side that I just highlighted in blue, it's three cubes long. And this side that's highlighted in red, so that layer, it's three cubes long by three cubes wide. Which means if we multiply those two things, three times three gives us a total of nine cubes in the top layer. And then we multiply that by three layers and we end up with 27 cubic units. And you might, you might go, Mr. Falstrom, this was, I don't need to multiply for this. I can count nine cubes. Well, just remember not every 
volume problem you're going to see in math is going to be simple like in this example you're going to see some other ones that have a lot more cubes or you're going to see uh, prisms with uh, dimensions that have very large numbers and counting is not going to be fun so now let's try just multiplying with that problem from earlier so let's find out the length and the width of the top layer so we're going to multiply the length and the width to get how many cubes are in the top layer instead of counting. So if we just count the sides, if you count that blue with me, I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 cubes. And then I'm going to look for the width, which is that side, and I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 cubes. So the longest side is 9 cubes. The shortest side is 8 cubes. And if we do 9 times 8, That'll give us how many cubes are in that top layer. And then I also have highlighted the height in yellow, and we can see this is one, two, three, four, five cubes tall. There are five layers. So if we do nine times eight, there are 72 cubes in the top row. That is so much faster than counting all 72. Okay, and now that I know that there are 72 cubes, if I multiply that by the height, by five, I get a total answer of 360 cubic units. That is way faster than me counting 72 cubes up and then doing 72 plus 72 plus 72 plus 72 plus 72. Now hold on. Let's go back and look at what we just did and talk about it because there's something really important that just happened in that last problem. So what we really did is that we multiplied the length and width to get the number of cubes in that top layer and then we multiplied that by the number of layers what we really did was just a fancy way of saying all we really did to solve this problem is we multiplied the length the width, and the height, the three different dimensions. We took those three numbers and we multiplied them. We did 9 times 8 times 5. Each of those numbers corresponds to the length, the width, and the height. And in other words, there's a formula that we can use to calculate the volume of any rectangular prism. It doesn't matter how many cubes there, there are. If it's a rectangular prism, if we do length times width times height, we can calculate the volume just by multiplying those three different numbers. But wait, there's more. Yes, there's more. Follow along with me. 3 times 2 is 6. If I change the order to that problem, I do 2 times 3, I also get 6. Here's a different problem with three numbers. If I do 4 times 2 times 5, I get 40. Because 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 5 is 40. If I change the order of that, and I do 4 times 5 times 2, I still get 40. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. What if I change it another time? What if I do 2 times 5 times 4? Well, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times 4 is 40. In other words, what I've just described to you is something that is called the commutative property of multiplication, which means if I'm multiplying, I can put the factors, the numbers that are getting multiplied, I can put those in any order I like, and I will still get the same answer. And we can actually take advantage of this when we multiply length, width, and height for volume because the order of factors, since the order of factors doesn't matter with multiplication, that means any combination of the formula will work, which means length times width times height works. Length times height times width works. What if I do width times height times length? If you look at all these different combinations, all of them work. You can multiply the numbers in any order that you like. 
And that is very exciting to me because that means if we go back to this problem again, and we, when we did it the first time, this is the order we did. We did length times width times height. And so that means we did nine times eight times five, which means we ended up with 72 times five. And I don't know about you, but 72 times five is not a problem I would enjoy doing in my head. It's probably, I would probably have to write it down on a piece of paper and solve it. But if I change the order, I can make a problem. I can come up with a problem that might be easier for me to do instead of 72 times five. So let's rearrange the order here. Let's do five times eight times nine. So let's switch it around. And if I do five times eight times nine, five times eight is 40, 40 times nine, that's where I get to use powers of 10. So when we learned about powers of 10 in the first math unit, it's not something that we're gonna forget about. We're gonna keep using it all year long. And this is a great example. 40 times nine, that's the same as four times nine, with another zero, right? So four times nine is 36, and then I take that other zero, I put it on there, and I can do that in my head much, much more easily than 72 times five. And we would get the same answer, 360 cubic units. So let's talk a little bit about expressions. One possible expression we could write that would show the volume of this prism would be, five times two times three. And remember, an expression is a math problem that doesn't have an equal sign. So one way I could show the volume of this prism would be looking at these three dimensions. So what I want you to try and do is write a different equivalent expression. Change the order. What's a different combination that would work? Some possible combinations could be something like five times three times two, or two times three times five, or two times five times three, all of those combinations, um, it's really up to you. Do you wanna multiply the length and the width and the height, or do you wanna do the height and the length and the width? It's really, you can put the, you can put the numbers in any order you want to make it easier for you to multiply, and that's really cool. So, Here's one possible expression we could write that would show the volume of this prism. And it would be uh, 4 times 3 times 5. Please write a different equivalent expression that you could use to find the volume of this prism. What is an expression that shows the total volume of this prism? So again, write me a write me an expression that shows you that shows me um, that would give me the answer all right now that you've written your expression go ahead and solve it and go ahead and tell me what is the total volume of this rectangular prism and before we get to the answer I want to put down some combinations for you so here are four different expressions that could all be used. They all, they all work because um, this prism, it has a length of six, a width of three, and a height of four. So out of these four choices that I'm showing you right now, which one do you think would be the easiest to multiply uh, in your head? What do you think? You think it would be... 3 times 6 times 4, 3 times 6 times 6. Go ahead and write down the one that you think would be the easiest for you to do. The easiest one for me personally would be 4 times 3 times 6. Because, um, and I'm not saying that this was a right, this is the only way to think about it. I'm just talking about me personally. For me, I like this one because I four times three is a math fact that is easy to me. Four times three is 12. And 12 times six, I know my 12, so 12 times six is 72. So the total volume of this prism is 72 cubic units. 
So let's take a minute and let's walk back to the learning goal. So when we started, I told you you were going to practice finding the volume of rectangular prisms using different strategies, which we have done. We have not explained the steps yet. We're going to do that in a minute but we did just practice writing some expressions. Let's recap a little bit and reflect. So first of all, there are many different strategies that you can use to calculate the volume of a rectangular prism. There's counting and adding, there's a combination of counting and multiplying, or you can just multiply. All of these strategies are effective but multiplying is the most efficient, especially if the rectangular prism contains a large amount of cubes. Again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with counting, but if you have a lot of cubes to count, it's very easy to make a mistake. So the better you are at multiplying, the easier volume will be for you because you're going to find that strategy to be the quickest. And with the multiplying strategy, another reason why it's I like it better than counting is that we also get to choose the order that we multiply the three dimensions. We don't have to just go in order of length times width times height. We can flip the numbers around into any order we want thanks to the commutative property of multiplication. And some of those combinations are actually much easier problems. So thanks for participating. Before you go, I want you to answer this question. What's something you learned from this video and what are the steps that you need to do to find the volume of a rectangular prism? How do you do it? If I give you a rectangular prism, tell me what you're going to do to find out what the total volume is. Once you're done with that, have a great rest of your day and I will see you on the next video.